Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and this is part two in using Cake PHP's auth component. Uh, so, in this video, we're going to finish up the register page. Uh, we're going to rewrite the auth component's hash passwords method. This step is completely optional. You do not have to do this. The auth component will work, uh, it'll register the user. The only problem you'll run into is, like I said, comparing the password to the password confirmation. The password confirmation will be the regular password and password will come in as a 40 character hash so they will not match. You could get around that by doing validation inside of your controller. You could use the auth components password method and hash the password confirmation and then you could compare them effectively um, but you would still have the problem of using model validation to set a maximum length to the password. Uh, that would still not work. So if you do not want to do this you don't have to but I like to rewrite the hash passwords method what we're going to do is make it to where it only hashes the password before it saves it to the database I think doing it this way is just cleaner as it keeps validation out of the controller and keeps it into the model and uh, it's the way that I like to do it so let's get started in the text editor we need to open up our users model or user model and let's go back to our users controller first though and in our before filter what we want to do is check whether or not a user is accessing the add or edit actions those actions are the ones that are going to be doing password saves so we'll check if this action this action returns the current action being requested We'll check if it's equal to add or if this action is equal to edit. And we can save that. And if they are requesting the add or edit action, what we want to do is tell the auth component to use our model for hashing or authenticating actually. So we say this auth authenticate and set it equal to our user model. Save that. And now we just need to rewrite the hash passwords method. So in our user model, after the has many association, we will override the function called hash passwords. The hash passwords takes one argument, and it is the data that's being passed to it, I believe. So what we want to do is check if this data, the user model, password, is set. If it is, is set, we want to hash the password, so we can set the this data user password equal to its hashed version. So we're just going to hash, hash the password now. And we can do that by using the security uh, library and its hash method. So we can say security hash, it's a static method, and it takes three parameters. The first one is the string that you want to hash. We just want to hash the password. So we can copy this, paste it in. The second parameter is the type of hash you want to use. I'm just going to set that to null, and it'll use SHA1 by default. You could also change that to MD5 or SHA256. And the second one is a true or false. It's just a Boolean of whether or not when it hashes if it should use our security.salt as well so it'll take the password and concatenate or append the uh, salt value and then hash those together making your password encryption that much stronger so I recommend you do that so we're hashing the user's password and then we're storing it back into the password array here 
then we just need to return data and also outside of the if return data here as well so now we've rewritten it we now need to tell it to use it right before it saves to the database and just like in our controllers we had a function called before filter which ran before any of our actions were executed we also have a function here in the model called before save which will run before any saves happen to the database so we can just call our hash passwords method here pass in null and tell it true and then we just need to return true as well so we'll save that so now when a user registers it'll effectively hash the password and it'll save it it'll it'll hash only before it saves it to the database so that way we can use model validations to uh, validate the password so let's do that we'll create a new attribute here in our user model called validate set that equal to an array and let's validate the user's name and we can say please enter your name we'll use the not empty rule to ensure that they can't uh, submit their name with an empty value and we'll set the message to be please enter your name and we will perform some validations on the username as well we will say uh, the username must be between 5 and 15 characters and the rule we're going to use here will set to an array and we can say between 5 and 15 this is a cake PHP rule and it'll ensure that this value is between 5 and 15 characters in length and we'll set the message to be the username must be between 5 and 15 characters let's also ensure that the username is unique so that we don't have any duplicate users stored to the database we can say username or that username has already been taken and the rule here will be is unique and that's a cake PHP rule which will ensure that the value is unique before it's saved to the database and we'll set the message to say that username has already been taken and now let's validate the password set that equal to an array and we'll say the password must be between 5 and 15 characters as well the rule will be an array between 5 and 15 and the message let's just copy I'm tired to type in here it's already typed once so we'll use it paste there we go and we also want to make sure that the password field matches the password confirmation field so we'll say the passwords do not match the rule here we will say match passwords match passwords is not a cake PHP rule we're going to have to write it ourselves cake PHP does not have a rule to match fields we'll set the message to be 
passwords do not match. There we go. So let's write that password match passwords function. And it takes one argument, the data. And what we need to do is check whether or not the password matches the password confirmation. We can do that by saying if data password is equal to this data user the password confirmation if they are equal to to each other that means they do match so we can just return true otherwise they do not match and we want to also invalidate the password confirmation field we can use the invalidate method here and what we pass to it is the field that we want to invalidate which is password confirmation and we can also set the error message we'll use the same error message that we used for the regular password field so I'll copy that and paste it and since they do not match we need to return false save it so now we can validate all of our data here we wrote our own validation function to match the passwords and it returns true if they match and if it's if they do not match it returns false and both password fields will have an error saying the passwords do not match so in the next video we will set up the login and logout actions and then we'll register a new user and test everything out so I'll see you there